for very first time that I drank. Um, I was 12 years old. It was in my community. Um, I had actually gotten um, some keys to uh, to the Delo gym with a couple of friends, and we all pitched in for a bottle. <laughs> and it was passing around and taking shots with um, a bottle of Seven Up, like chasing it. Um, not, not a normal kind of first drinking experience from what I have heard from other people. I think that first feeling of um, drinking and having that substance, it really was, um, it felt liberating in a sense. Um, I felt like I was taken away from my problems. This is important, like we gotta talk about this stuff. I'm Aura Williamson Mercury. Um, I'm 31 years old. I live here in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories. I kind of always knew in my heart that I had a problem because I also come from a family who I struggle with addictions, you know, alcoholism, drugs, um, you know, so that, that sense of like, this is normal or this is like, it was never there. So I, I felt, you know, that I, that I always probably shouldn't be drinking. Um, and I, and I did attempt at several times to be like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna stop drinking. And that would never last for more than two months at a time, um, for years, for years it was like that. Like I would be like, oh, I'm on the straight and narrow for a bit. And then, you know, all of a sudden the, the wine is calling me. So I went that way for a long time until I had children. And I feel like that was a massive impact. Like knowing what happened to me as a child, I didn't want that for my children. You know, like I didn't want them to experience being taken and put in foster care or witnessing like the, the parties and all that kind of stuff. So that was a big changing point for me. And as things progressively got worse um, with my drinking, um, it, it was my children that they were like the reason why I decided to get some help um, because I, I knew that I needed to be there for them and you know, I had to break the cycle somehow. So. It's always like something that you're trying to um, like use to make yourself feel better and I, that to me that was the connection like I was using I was using drugs I was using alcohol like different types of substances you know I didn't want to feel the way I was feeling so I used that to alter my mood when really I should be sitting with these feelings and learning how to deal with them in healthy positive ways I didn't know how to do that so you know this this sober journey has been teaching me, you know, healthy ways, healthy ways to deal with my anger and my hurt and my sadness. So like now I can sit with it and be like, okay, you know, this sucks, it sucks to feel this way, but you know, what's the alternative? You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's everything like, you know, for, for me, learning how to deal with those emotions that I spent a lifetime hiding from. That was a major journey. I did end up going to treatment and I did follow an AA plan for some time, I think for a year into my sobriety. And I think that's great. Like, you know, if somebody's, you know, on that healing journey, you gotta do what works for you. And over time I found that AA maybe wasn't the best for me, um, but I think to each to each their own. Like if you if you're finding, you know, solace in going out and being in the land, then you know that's that's amazing. Like if you have a support group at home, that's great. Like you know, like somebody that you can talk to, um, just to get those feelings out. That's great. And for me, I really threw all of my energy <laughs> into uh, the gym. I was at the gym. Like if I was not feeling well or something, like I got those endorphins going and that really helped for me. I also had uh, a really strong support system after coming home from treatment. Um, I had a, um, a, a number of women in recovery as well. So if I didn't feel like I wanted to go to that meeting per se with a bunch of other people, like I could still get the benefit of talking and like getting those feelings out. People have 
bad days, really bad days. And there's days where I don't really, I don't wanna say I regret because I, I don't, but there's days when I do struggle and I feel like this is a really tough day. I, I feel like I wanna drink, you know? And then that's like when I really need to buckle down and remember like, you know, like what are my resources? What, like, what are my, you know, can I go to the gym today? Do I need to get a babysitter and go for a drive? Um, can I call someone, you know? Cause like recovery, it's not linear. It's, there's up and downs all the time. And I know it's gonna be like that. It's gonna be a battle for life. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't regret it. Not in, this, not in the slightest. Like life is exponentially better. <laughs> since sobering up. Everybody has a past, everybody has like their own traumas, their own experiences and you know some people don't have the resources to get help and they're stuck in these cycles. We need to be more open and accepting of, of people and their struggles and um, yeah we need to we need to be offering help instead of judgment.